I want to read this uh, quote, so something I've said before, but I want to be sure I get it written down and said, every tear of every torture victim demands justice in the world. That is important to remember. And if we could ever find that sense of justice in the world, uh, that we remember that every tear of a torture victim demands justice, um, our courts ought to be filled with those who torture us uh, regularly. Uh, I just wanted to add that. And today I, I want to add about Aung San Suu Kyi, sort of a failed human rights person and a failed prime minister of Burma. And in 1999, I decided to go to Burma. I'd been asked to work on the campaign with Jeremy Woodrum and uh, Dan Beaton. And I went over to take, I met with the refugees on the refugee border of Thailand and Burma. Uh, I was going to sort of join into the campaign for moving Aung San Suu Kyi, a leader, a political leader who won the victory, but the military overturned the victory and, you know, exiled her or tried to exile her by putting her in house arrest. Um, So I wanted to work on bringing her to power. And so I go over there, visit the refugee camps, and then in Bank, or in Rangoon, um, you couldn't see her because she was under house arrest and had been for 14 years or something like that. And uh, I asked the State Department if I could visit her. No, I couldn't do that. And I asked everywhere. No one could. No one had seen her. Just the diplomats and her government. So I uh, I asked our taxi cab driver how to see her and she said well it's, it's all military around her home and everything but I know she's hands out rice once a week for about a half hour at the National League for Democracy's headquarters if you could find her there you'd probably be okay so Farrell and I decided that's what we're gonna do that's what we're here we're gonna see her uh, no one else has seen her we're gonna do that anyway so Farrell sat inside the NLD headquarters with a sarong on and waited and waited and waited and waited. I pretended I was a, uh, uh, a dealer in antiques walking up and down the street outside in case she came, I'd be close by. So eventually she did come and Farrell talked to her and said, would you like to meet Jackie's outside? She said, sure. So we actually got to meet with her and uh, I was impressed. And uh, she was really amazed. We took some pictures, she signed, uh, a thing to a feral son of Ram, uh, and it was beautiful. We had a nice, beautiful meeting with her and got it done. And so we came back and we joined the campaign with uh, Jeremy and uh, Dan Beaton and uh, decided to start a U.S. campaign for Burma. Um, we did, uh, I decided in the month of May of, I think, 01, uh, that we should every day have a different celebrity explain a different problem uh, in Burma. So if you watch them all, you would know exactly what the problems in Burma, Burma way in a substantial way. And so that worked magically and got covered in the New York Times and a whole lot of other people. Uh, it worked magically. Also, as Shep Ferry, he was automatically, he would do an iconic delivery of art for her, of her, you know, photograph. And uh, he sure enough did, and it went worldwide. It was, it was amazing. Um, we also did a movie. We put together all the people that supported Aung San Suu Kyi, bands, politi- politi- important people, politicians. You know, we, we made a movie of that, just so everything was in one place and you could give someone a, a CD, you know, the old CDs. You could give them that CD and say, this is her support in the world, so you could see how big and wide it was. So it was, that was another thing we did for about 25,000, I think, at best. Um, and then, uh, we looked out for the refugees in many, many instances, and, and that was done by the U.S. Campaign for Burma, who lobbied uh, regularly. And so when she did eventually get into power, she turned on the Rohingya people, which are the Muslim people living you know, for years and centuries in, uh, in Burma, in Myanmar. And she turned on them and they were driven out. It was a genocidal move by the military, pushed them out, they're on an island, even to this day, off of, uh, I forget where, but there's not, maybe off India, maybe off uh, 
I, for, I forget, but the, anyway, they're on an island now, stranded, a million of them, and um, they can't go back yet. They're stateless people. And so the hope is if Aung San Suu Kyi, who now has been imprisoned, but right after that, a year or two after that, they put her in prison, the military did, and the military took power again, and they're dominating again as they used to, burning villages, raping, all that stuff that goes with a tough military. And so Aung San Suu Kyi is a failed leader now because she did not stand up for the Rohingya people. And because of that, the world lost respect for her. And so as we try to bring back civilian government over military government, which is always better and softer and cleaner, um, you know, we're cheering for someone who is felt as a racist or a possible racist. Um, does she agree with that policy? She did agree with it and spoke at the UN to that effect. So in a sense, we don't want to work for her. So it kind of stymies our efforts today. But it, it, you don't always win. <laughs> we lose most of the time in human rights work anyway. But even when you win big sometimes, which we did with Aung San Suu Kyi and the president of the United States visited her, it was all cheerful. It's all gone to darn it. I mean, just, she failed the human rights movement, she failed her country, she failed the, the Muslim people in the world uh, as an example of kicking them out of that country. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and then sometimes you win and lose. And that's what's happened to Aung San Suu Kyi. And, we're still trying to bring her back because she is a civilian government, and that is better than a military government at any time. I want to, I keep going? I'm sorry? I keep going? Uh, is this a new piece? Uh-huh. Okay, hold on a second. 